All right, folks, we are going to be getting uh, back on this um, John Deere Model A R. Actually, yeah, it's Model A R unstyled, they call it, 1938. And if you know, if you see the previous video when we removed the head, um, our problem was we had coolant leaking from a um, passage where the uh, push rod goes through and um, it was leaking coolant down, you know, where it would find its way down in the crankcase, down in the oil. Went to a couple places and uh, none of the places around here in my area really specialize in this really old stuff. Um, but they came up with, uh, all pretty much came up with the same idea that um, instead of trying to drive this particular tube out, you can see how that tube goes goes down in there. Um, here, we'll have a look, see at it with a light. It's almost too bright. But you can kind of see how that tube goes down in there. This was the good one. And this side was all pitted and stuff like that. Um, anyhow, they uh, instead of trying to drive this out, I just thought it would be best to um, take a like a piece of uh, stiff copper tubing. Um, and whatever they decided they would, I didn't ask them what they decided they'd, you know, like put as a coating around it to kind of seal it. Um, but pretty much, I mean, as long as the push rod fits through it with enough play, you know, it shouldn't rub on that at all. That's what we decided to go ahead and do. Um, so anyways, because I have not been a, any luck finding... A used I don't really want to go with a used one of these um, it's quite a bit of money to have one of these completely gone through but this particular problem that we had you know they'd have to fix this anyways and since that's really the only issue that we've got with it it was just um, you know that's just what we decided to do for now it's not like this is something that runs a lot all the time every day so um, as long as this seals up, it, and you know, it, if it seals up, it should be fine. So, anyways, um, got this back, waiting on a head gasket. Um, we just need to get this all cleaned up, get the get the block all cleaned up with the old gasket that's still on there, and then we'll get this reinstalled and see how it goes. Okay, we're about ready to uh, install this uh, cylinder head. Uh, one of the first things you want to do is get your, uh, if you've got yours, you know, taken apart similar to mine, um, you want to get these inner push rods in here now because you'll regret it if you get this uh, head all on and torqued and everything like that and these things don't bend and they, um, they hit right there and you can't get them out and in there if you've got the whole radiator and all that stuff off of there it's a different story but if you got it like this you want to get these in here now the outer one's not a big deal because they've got room to kind of go in like this and go in there but you can see where the inner ones go they've got nothing so you would have to get them out about that far at the end to be able to get them out you've got no room even if you had this out of the way this is all in the way radiator so put them in now you'll regret it um i did that before on this tractor once already i've had this head off several times and uh anyways trying to fix this issue basically but hopefully this is going to be the final time anyhow but we're going to get this uh we get the gasket you know slid on here and finagle the head in here and get it uh, pushed on and get the nuts started and get them torqued down okay i did kind of forget uh you will need the clearance you know because these are going to pop out here like this you'll need the clearance getting this in here but if you get it in here and you slide it all the way up forward um now's the time to put these in because you can see you can kind of angle them in here and uh Just like that it's just when they get into these holes they don't do much angling to 
get them in and out. So that's uh, that's the way to do it if you if you happen to have yours, uh, you know, with everything still on here, radiator, gas tank, whatnot. Needs to just slide this in like so, and then the same way I just put that um, in there. You'll see you've got the room to uh, do the other one. Now you can put the other ones in there. Shoot, it don't matter. Um, but I just know 100% when this head is on and torqued and everything that you can get the uh, outer push rods uh, in and out. So anyways, we'll keep going. Okay, so we got the head slid on and got all the nuts started here. Um, I don't know the actual torque sequence. I just start with uh, this guy right here and then start up here, go back down to one of these and just kind of work my way from the center out. Um, I usually run these in with, uh, um, they're torqued at 150 foot pounds, final torque. I usually buzz them all up uh, with a quarter inch drive uh, impact gun. I know my impact gun and I you know, know what it sounds like and feels like when you're close to about 100 foot pounds. I do that on all of them and then um, Go ahead and take the torque wrench and then do the rest do all of the rest of them uh up to 150. i mean this is a really robust thick you know cast head or whatever i mean you're not gonna damage it or whatever but just start with the center go all the way out just as a precaution but you're really not gonna mess anything up with something like this versus um you know something like doing a cylinder head on that hyundai over there you know you don't want to be doing my method that I just told you about here on that, you want to actually follow the service manual torque specs on there. Um, but anyhow, this, you're not really going to hurt this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that. Um, like I said, we got, you know, you want to make sure, dang sure that at this point you've already got these in because like I said, you know, that will not come out. Even if you had this moved, it's going to go in here and it's going to go another six so so inches hit the radiator still not come out believe me i've uh i've done it i've had that happen <laughs> i had this head torqued on here probably the first time i removed it get it all put back on here go to put the push rods in you know before doing the valves and all of the or the rockers and all that stuff find out i couldn't get it in here um, I believe that's when I did take this radiator off. I did have this radiator off at one point because I didn't want to ruin the head gasket by, you know, taking the head back off. So I, that's what I remember now I use my big crane hoist here because this is one beefy radiator here and uh, had it, that all pulled off of here so that um, I can get that stoop push rod in there. So anyways, don't forget these. But like I said, these, um, these, ones on the outside they uh, can slide in just like so um, once this is on here so anyways I'm gonna actually pull that back out so I don't it's not in my way while I'm trying to torque the nuts down so anyways we're gonna we're gonna keep going okay so at this point with the head torqued on and now I've got this uh, lower holes on here. Um, we can fill this thing up with, with uh, coolant because um, everything is sealed off now because your coolant's gonna come. This is the outlet, you know, comes out of, out of here. You know, there's no thermostat um, in these things. That's really kind of what these fins in the front here are kind of more or less designed for, but no thermostat. Um, but yeah, you're, lower you know the water going in and then you've got there's a water pump in there of some sort um pump the water up through the you know the the whole block and the head and everything like that um so at this point right now we, we can go ahead and fill this thing up because um we can you know see if this is thing sealed up even before we get anything else put together because this particular problem it would leak out of this tube. You know, remember this tube was the one that uh, uh, had the rust pitting holes. You'll see that from the other video. Um, and so it was dripping and it would just drip coolant out and just trickle out along here. And then eventually it would fill up the uh, uh, bottom of the deal there. And then that hole right there, that's where all the oil 
that um, after it comes through the valve train and everything collects down and goes back into the uh, well kind of the oil pans aren't really an oil pan on these things but you know you get the point it's down there uh, so yeah we can fill this thing up um, I've also in the past even had this off and filled this right up to the you know deal right there because that was higher than this that way I knew how much to this time I'm just gonna go ahead and just fill it completely full let it sit for a while and definitely if it starts definitely leaking here well then we know our problem didn't get solved then um, but if it don't leak at all this way then that's so far a good sign what's gonna change that is when this thing starts and warms up and then cools off and it starts and warms up and cools off that's where we're possibly gonna you know could have issue or something like that so okay kind of had a uh brain fart a little bit um this hole is open to the coolant valley or, or area so yeah now we got this thing uh filled up here you know and before I know must have did this test before never had it you know came shooting up out of that hole um, which had nothing to do with this and so it must just be open I have no idea if it's uh, supposed I mean I really there I just looked at the bolt again and there is that crusty stuff on the on the threads you know so obviously it it had been uh, exposed to coolant and everything like that I just put a little bit of silicone on the threads and uh tighten that thing down on here got that on um but right now you know we're not we don't have anything leaking uh out of here so um you know hopefully uh this is going to work and um be fine but uh as of right now you know we got this thing topped completely off up to there and so we can just I'm just gonna let it let it sit right now and go do a couple other things here in the shop and just let this thing sit and make sure that it's uh, fine I know that I'm not gonna be right now I'm not gonna be leaking any coolant into the oil so I don't need to worry about that um, it's because if this does start just dripping out of here then um, it's just gonna go on the ground um, it's not gonna go into the engine because it's not gonna make its way into uh, that hole right there can't do it now without the valve cover on there this is a good time to you know to check this and make sure it's fine i mean this is what i did to in finding the problem i had uh you know had to figure out you know what was going on you know the very first time uh thought it was just a bad head gasket so we pulled this head basically just pulled this head forward never really pulled it out of there had to take this off obviously but um, or maybe I didn't I don't remember I think I just moved this thing forward put a new head gasket on it and we still had the same issue so then when I had to trace back and figure out you know okay what's going on here um, I disassembled it this about this far and uh, even had the valve still on actually and then that's when I noticed it leaking out of that tube there it was like okay now we got to pull this head back off um, and check and figure out you know why is it leaking out of this tube and that's when I found those pitted holes you know in this tube and everything like that so then I had the machine shop you know uh, press a new tube inside of of this one right here just a thin you know copper tube or whatever so and then hopefully it's sealed up but uh, anyways so now the next step is after we determine that this is going to be okay for the time being and we get the uh, valve train uh, put back on here and then um, the valve cover and then I just got to reattach the bolts to the you know this this can move so that you're okay torquing this completely down um, I don't know the torque specs of these just tighten them <laughs> you're not gonna hurt nothing on these old things then we'll come over here and get our exhaust and then um, we're gonna fire this thing up and I'll do a special video um, have the some cute little farmer's daughter you know uh, show us how to start this tractor and uh, then we'll uh, you know from there we're just gonna have to uh, now it's gonna from then it's gonna be all put back together so then you're not gonna be able to see it from here 
you know, unless you pull the valve cover, I mean, it's easy enough to pull the valve cover off. So you could just pull the valve cover off and, and see what happens. But, um, after, after we run it for a while, get it warmed up, get it up to operating temp and, um, shut it down. Then, you know, the next thing we can do is just go down here where we have the valve installed after it sits for a while and we can crack that open. And if the first thing that comes out is just oil, then we're still good to go. And then that'll be a good test later on that we, you know, as a, one of the starting sequences of this thing will be, you know, crack that thing open, which is actually not a bad thing to do if you have something like this, no matter what your, you know, is go, if you, even if you don't have any issues, it's really not a bad idea to just crack that thing open with something that doesn't get operated all the time um, and see what comes out of there first. Cause if it's anything with water or whatever, that's gonna settle right down in the bottom of there first. And that way, you know, you'll know what's going on or you won't know what's going on, but at least you'll have an idea that, to not crank and start it until you get that, get that fixed. So uh, anyways, we'll keep on going. Okay, so when you go ahead and slide these um, uh, this whole rocker assembly on here, you know, just the same way that we you, you saw it earlier, we took it off. You just uh, slide it back on here, run your first nuts here, and um, torque them at about uh, best specs I found are you know anywhere from uh, 90 to 110. I just put them at 90; it's fine. And then uh, run your your jam nut up against there, and uh, I need to tighten it about. 50, 70 or so, give or take. It's just a jam nut. And then um, you, I didn't have to worry about, uh, you can go through the valve adjustment and all that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't do any of that. Um, they're probably a little a little loose, um, but I didn't uh, find any information on um, how to do that. But this thing, you know, it's been running really good and everything, so I'm not really too worried about that. So as um, long as you didn't mess with any of these, you know, it'll stay the same as it was before. But it isn't a bad idea if you can check out and find out where you can get into the valve adjustment and all that. Um, if I can find that info, I'll, I'll make a video on that. Um, later on, uh, we are gonna have a video that shows, you know, what happened here. Uh, Cause after I drove this thing in here, it started leaking and then, um, the next time we fired this up, I know that the oil pressure on this thing was, was, uh, I would think should have been a little bit more. I'll show you the gauge here in just a second. Um, but, but it was actually one of the first time we fired this thing up and I was running it making some adjustments to the carburetor, doing all that, close the valves. Um, I looked at the oil pressure gauge and it wasn't registering anything. And so we've got, had an issue with, uh, the oil pump. And then that video is a whole separate video. It's going to be part three uh, that'll show you about what we uh, found and how we're going to fix that. So um, I don't know what happens completely unrelated to this problem. So um, don't know what happened, but uh, we'll theorize that in the next video and all that stuff. But so pretty much uh, basically now all you're left with here is um sliding the valve cover on and then sticking your outer nuts on for it just and opposite of the way we do this thing's already filled with coolant everything else is on here um we got spark plugs out right now but um once that's all in and ready this thing is is all ready to start so um it's uh pretty simple to do so anyways uh thanks for watching